Why hello you amazing beautiful people and welcome back to another Taylor Swift Friday. How all of you doing? Have you had a good week? Got any cool plans over the weekend? So I asked all of you what you would like our next journey on these Fridays to be. We've done the Errors Tour. We've done Miss Americana. What do you all want next? And I get a lot of recommendations. There's a lot of stuff you would all like me to check out. There's some of her talk show spots, her funny moments videos, all sorts of things like that. More behind the scenes Taylor stuff. But I'd say the two most recommended I've had have been, you want me to do the entire Reputation tour. Um, apparently that like live performance and that video is amazing. Everyone's been telling me I need to check that one out. So we're going to do that. But before we do that, all of you have pretty much been telling me to check out the Long Pond Studio Session. So we've checked out a few songs from this performance already, but all of you have asked me to check out the full thing. It's the 17 songs from her Folklore album. They're all performed in, um, well, we've checked out a few videos. It looks like a, a cabin. I'm guessing it's going to be explained a little bit more. It looks very personal, very intimate. I think this was filmed during lockdown. I'm not 100% sure. I'm sure it's going to be explained when we press play on this. Um, there, there's 17 songs and she talks between each song. So I don't know how many uh, songs I'm going to do per reaction. It'll probably vary between three and four, depending on, on the parts in between. But yeah, you all wanted this. I am so excited for this. So that's what we're going to do. I am a bit confused though, because I thought you'd all ask for the extra acoustic set um, before we jump into this, but that doesn't seem to be the case. I thought you'd all ask for that, but you all seem to want me to do this instead. So that's what we're going to do. Anyway, make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe for more. Journey to get a gold plaque one day on that wall. So press that subscribe button. And uh, also, how long is it until the new album release? Not long at all. <laughs> we can actually say it's next week. Anyway, like, subscribe, and let's jump into my first time ever reaction to Taylor Swift's Folklore album performed live, The Long Pond Studio Sessions Part 1. I'm really curious how, what this is. Because I've only seen the clips of the songs, but everyone's told me there's more to this. 2020. So this was during lockdown, right? Okay, so it is 8.30 in the morning. And why am I awake, you ask? Well, it's kind of a long story. Um. I sort of unexpectedly started writing the new album. And at that point I was just like, oh, just I'm just writing songs in quarantine. And then there, the, it just became an album really quickly and really, really kind of beautifully, surprisingly. And I've just realized something. Why have I not got my wife to watch the Errors Tour or Folklore? Because she watched the Miss Americana documentary and I, I don't even know why I didn't recommend more. I don't recommend more because if, if it's on like Netflix or Disney Plus and all these things, then my wife will watch it. And that's the easiest way to get her to watch stuff. If I if it's on like any of the the freaking streaming services we own, she'll watch it. I, I'm, I'm gonna tell my I'm gonna tell my wife about these because it, it doesn't take much. I I briefly told her about Miss Americana. She loves like documentaries. She watched it in straight away and just crying over Taylor Swift, which was amazing. So I gotta recommend these. Any recommendations you guys want me to give my wife to like you know so we can lure her into this world? You let me know. You put them down below. They're it just became an album really quickly and really, really kind of beautifully, surprisingly. And so. She's actually really like. You can't go into studios now because they're all closed. And comfortable is like a vlogger, else. isn't she, weirdly? Um, and I know that other people do this all the time, so it's actually not that special, but I'm freaking out over it. We've built a home studio in my house. And so it's like. I'm gonna do vocals today in my Wait. house. It's, I'm very excited about it. Oh, I don't know why it took me so long to realize. She, that's, did she record the, did, there's, did she record the folklore? There's no way, she recorded the album from what, just at the end of her bed, like that. They put up these like sound barriers and gave her a micro, there's no way, seriously? There's no way. Okay, so over there is where my recording booth is, and then on the other side of the wall, Laura! Hey! Yeah! Jack? Holy shit. It's like you're right there, but instead you're in New York. I'm freaking out, we've never done this. Oh my God. 
Oh my god! This is crazy. Oh my god, this is amazing! During the COVID-19 lockdown, the musicians recorded separate miles apart. They almost created a long pond studio session. No! The way it was done is really sweet. Ah, oh, no! It's too early to be getting emotional. Oh my God, this looks beautiful. This looks absolutely beautiful. First day we've been in the same room. Cheers, yeah. First moment. That's so weird. <laughs> I think when lockdown happened, I just found myself completely listless and purposeless and it, that, and that was in the first three days of it. And then, and then I remembered when we met yeah. a year before. I, I, I can't help but find myself just like realizing how comfortable Taylor is on camera. And I don't know if people are gonna say like, well, of course she is, she's a singer, she's, you know, she's, she's, you know, she's famous, she's used to being on camera. But that's not necessarily true. Like what I mean is there's a lot of artists and singers and, and actors who, when they're put in situations like this, whether it's interviews or like vlogs or anything, they seem really out of their comfort zone, you know? And they, they don't come across natural. And um, it's like, there's you notice like a difference between people who are just so comfortable being on like a camera, like just now chatting and just very normal. And people who like maybe put on a persona or maybe just aren't comfortable with it. And you can have the most famous people in the world that aren't comfortable with things like this. Taylor is one of the people who is the most comfortable ever. And I think that comes down to something we've, we've spoken about many times before. And that is the fact that she is so simply her. She's raw, she's real all the time. So for her to just be on a camera is the same as her just being off one. There's no difference. Be listless and purposeless and it, that, and that was in the first three days of it. And then, and then I remembered when we met yeah. a year before and I'd come to the national show and afterward you would come up and talk to me and you were so nice. And I was like, how do you guys write songs? And you were like, well, we all live in different places. So sometimes I'll just make tracks and send them around and send them to Matt. And I just kind of thought to myself, if there was ever an opportunity to work with someone that I was such a fan of who could work like that, that would be so cool. And then lockdown uh, happened and I texted you and I was like, hey, uh, you work? Do you, do you, are you in that place right now? And I was like, I don't know if this is a real text. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, is someone pretending? You know. I think it's also one of the reasons why it resonates with me so much is because in the dismantling of all of our systems of life that we've known in the pandemic, you're left with two options. You're either to cling to it and try to make it work or to just say, well, I guess I'm just going to chart a new path and kind of get a frontier mentality. And I think it was such like a thrilling use of quarantine to say like, well, everything's a blur, so I'm just going to rewrite it. Yeah. I, I didn't even tell my label until a week before we put it out. What was that, that call it existed. like? It was amazing. <laughs> I thought it was going to be stressful and I thought I was going to have to kind of stand up like with shaking hands being like, I promise I know what I'm doing. I know that there's not like a big single and I'm not doing like a big pop thing and I'm not. But they, my label was like, whatever you want to make, like we're down. <laughs> you ready to play amazing. this one? Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, no, I, I, I think it's really important that we play it. I think it will, it will take How that amazing. to realize that it's a real album. Taylor, li like Taylor literally wrote this during lockdown. Didn't tell anyone she was writing it. Made all, did, did it all on her own, made her own booth in, at the end of her bed. And then just went to a label a week before it's released and went, by the way, I've made a full completed album on my own. Here it is, what do you think? And they're just like, yep, yeah, cool, off we go. Is that seriously the true story behind this? I, that is fucking insane. That is insane. Mirage. It does. Never worked on an album like this. Me neither. No one has. I've never heard of this ever. I don't know if I ever will again. Like it's, I don't know if it's how- No one, no one has, no one will. Those are meant to be made, it just worked right now. This is so weird. There's I can't, if this is true, this is, this is how, that is crazy. Uncertainty about life this is crazy. causes endless anxiety, but there's another part that causes sort of a release of- Yeah, like a freedom. The pressures that you used to feel. Mm. Because <clears throat> if we're going to have to recalibrate everything, 
we should start with what we love the most first. And I think that was what we were sort of unconsciously doing with this. Totally, yeah. that is so it, exactly. If everything's gonna fall apart, then make a record. And I was so glad that we did because it turned out that like everybody needed a good cry as well as us. Oh no. <laughs> I mean, I've heard a lot of the, 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 folk, the, the, the folklore songs do make me cry, but I don't like that. <laughs> That's a bit of a red flag for me. Wait, sorry, what was the name of the song? Was it called The One? I haven't reacted to this one now, right? What was this called? My internet's really slow today, so it's taken like a year to do everything. So you might see like random pauses and stuff like that. Um, track one, the one. Okay. <clears throat> By the way, when I react to like songs and if I don't know the name, sometimes I might say I haven't heard it before and then when I press play, I say I've heard it before. I hope you guys don't mind. Um, I'm like, le I'm still learning. I'm still learning the names, I'm still learning the songs and that sort of stuff. And because I keep all these reactions genuine, I don't do a super amount of like extra stuff behind the scenes. Um, like I don't listen to any songs that I haven't reacted to, if, if that makes sense. The only songs I'm allowed on my Taylor Swift playlist are songs I have heard. Um, so sometimes like when I like do these, I might forget like the name of a song, but remember the song. I hope, I hope that makes sense. I just thought I'd explain that. Hope that makes sense. But it would have been fun if you would have been the one. Pretty sure this was errors. Because I don't think I reacted to the folklore video. Dream you're doing cool shit. Has having adventures on you. Oh, you meet some woman on the internet and take her home. We never painted by the numbers, baby, but we were making it count. You know, the greatest loves of all time are over now. Oh, God, I love her voice. I guess you never know, never know. This like, this like soft tone on this is beautiful. Like Taylor's like soft, mellow tones that she is doing this song with are stunning. They are stunning to listen to. Like her voice on this, just that soft, like almost like just talking. Like it's so calming. It's so, it's just so chilled and mellow. It's beautiful. I love her voice. It's another day waking love up it. alone. We were something, don't you think so? Roaring twenties, tossing pennies in the pool. And if my wishes came. True, it would have been you. In my defense, I have none, but never leaving well enough alone. But it would have been fun if you would have been the one. I, 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 I persist and resist the temptation to ask you if one thing had been different. Would everything be different today? We were something, don't you think so? Rose flowing with your chosen family And it would have been sweet If it could have been me In my defense I have none We 
digging up the grave another time But it would have been fun If you would have been the one Um, <clears throat> um, I've never realized how much a freaking, it, it was up, it's upstate New York, isn't it? Is that what she said? I never realized how much it actually looks like England. <laughs> That's weird. Without the, the hills in the background, because England doesn't really have, like, hills like that. It kind of looks like UK. Ah. Um, um, I'm not surviving this, this, these reactions. Oh my God. Oh my God. Um, that was absolutely freaking beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. That like soft tone, that just like, ooh, that she did, that note at the end of the song, my word. Um, I wasn't ready. Um, but the, the note I was not ready for was that high note. It just came out of nowhere. It just, nowhere. It's just all of a sudden, she's like, and here it is. And it's like, just out of nowhere. My word. She's like, turned me in, in, literally into butter with like just two seconds of notes. Like that was it. And I was gone. I, like Jesus. I just melting in my chair. Amazing. Absolutely fucking amazing. 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 Oh my God. I am already going to, I know I'm going to love this series. Oh, I know I'm going to love it so much. I, I, oh man, I'm already loving it. And with, with what, with one song in? Oh, this is gonna be so much it was fun. Funny I, I feel like you captured the spirit of the whole record with that song, with the one in, in the sense of just the way it opens. Uh, I'm doing good, I'm on some new shit. And saying yes instead of no. And I was like, is, this, is she talking about writing songs with me and everything else at the same time or something. I there think was it like has a, a new me I think it has a double meaning. The the opening the album with the words, I'm doing good, I'm on some new shit and saying yes instead of no. Um, it it applies to the situation that the song is written about where, you know, you're updating a former lover on what your life is like now and trying to be positive about it. But it was also where I where I am yeah. creatively where it's like I'm just saying yes, I'm just putting out an album in the worst time you could put one out. I'm just mm. making stuff with someone who I've always wanted to make stuff with as long as I've been a fan of The National. And I'm just going to say yes to stuff. Yeah. And it worked out. Vintage tea, brand new phone, high heels on. No, no, I have to pause. Whew. All right. I love this song. I've listened to Cardigan a bunch since my first time reaction to it. I even showed my wife this song. I fucking love this song. It's an awesome song. <laughs> it's such a good song. I love Cardigan so much. Um, <laughs> I'm already looking forward to hearing it again. Um, I'm excited. But I have to say... <laughs> oh, man. I, I, I love that we have those little snippets before and after with her just talking. Because those are the parts I want more of. I just want to see more of her behind the scenes. And I literally just like, I hope one day I get to meet her. I probably never will. I probably never will. Um, it, it, you know, I, I, I can't imagine there's like a, a more difficult person on this planet to meet. <laughs> but I just would like one day just to meet her and just say like, I, you know what? Do you know what I'd like to say more to Taylor than anything? I love her music and I love her. But I honestly would just like to say if I ever got a chance to meet her thank you for creating such a wonderful community you know that where a person just like a random person can just start listening to your music and immediately just feel like they're welcome into they're welcomed into a new family and it's like thank you so much for being you and creating a community like that because it's just so special I think I'd like to say that to her more than anything. On cobblestones, when you are young, they assume you know nothing. I love that look there. I love that look. Sequin smile, black lipstick, sensual politics. When you are young, they assume you know nothing. The contrast of this song as, as well, along with Betty, where Betty, it's like, I'm just 17, I don't know anything. And then Cardigan, obviously the complete like, the contrast is so good, you know. But I knew you, dancing in your Levi's, drunk under a street oh, it's, light. It's such a good song. I knew you, 
it's such a good song. Stand under my sweatshirt, baby, kiss it better. And when I felt like I was an old cardigan under someone's bed, you put me on and said I was your favorite. <laughs> oh, man, I love this song. He's a friend to none. She's two girls. Who's the one? When you are young, they assume you know nothing. But I knew you, playing hide and seek, and giving me weekends. I, I love, I love watching her face. I love watching her expressions, her emotions, and how she like changes how she feels based on what part of the song she's singing. This is why I love her so much. There's so many reasons why I love her so much. Another one is literally when she does these songs, they come from like her memory, they come from her own emotions and every song has so much feeling and weight behind it. And you can see that on her face. It, it doesn't feel so much like we're listening to an artist perform a song so much as it feels like we're sitting around a campfire and listening to a relative recall a story from their memory. And that's what her facial expressions feel like. Not like an artist singing a song, like a relative telling a story that means a lot to them, to us. That's what it feels like. Like it's from memory. It's from real feelings. It's from emotions. And I love that. I knew you, you heartbeat on my highline once in 20 lifetimes. I am when I felt like I was an old cardigan under someone's bed. You put me on and said I was your favorite. Coming into that like part of the song on like a higher, more energetic note, and then slowly like cutting that emotion in half and going into like a broken whisper. That that part. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's beautiful. Oh my god. It's amazing how much emotion you can glean from instrumental without complicated instruments. Where it's simply just a piano. And if it's played so well, it can convey just as much emotion. And just like as, as like a full blown orchestra could do, like some John Williams performance. It, if you just do these things right and you utilize the like incredible <laughs> abilities of an instrument, you can just you can just it's like maxing it out. Like it's amazing how impactful something can be with with just like nothing, you know, just like the simplest approach. But I knew you'd linger like a tattoo kiss. Knew you'd haunt all of my what ifs. The smell. favorite and least favorite part of the song. I don't know what it is. I really don't know what it is, but something about the way Taylor sings You'd Come Back to Me feels like a, it feels like a positive end, like a happy end. But the way she says it just breaks my heart. It makes a happy ending seem like a sad ending. 
I don't know if that makes sense, but it just breaks my heart the way she sings that part. I felt like I wasn't on guard again under someone's bed. You put me on and said I was your favorite. I love Cardigan so much. What what a freaking amazing song. <laughs> Man. <laughs> that was Man. So fun. Yeah. Oh god, this oh, is such a blast. Sniffing teary eyed again. I haven't cried yet though. Damn blast. You know that? You know what this is? A real blast. Wait, we're just going straight into the next one. The last when great you American sent me the dynasty. Track for the last great American dynasty. I had been wanting to write a song about Rebecca Harkness since 2013 Harkness. probably and i'd never figured out the right Wait. way to do it because there was never a track that felt like it could kind of hold Wait. this is an the entire story of somebody's life and whatever oh. and generations or whatever then when i heard that i was like oh my god i think this is my opening i think this is my moment i think i can write the <laughs> rebecca harkness story <laughs> that, that song is such a book the house to me because it's not about you but it is all about you well, and it's that like, country music um, kind of um, narrative device yes. where in country music it's like, this guy did this, <laughs> then this woman did this, yeah. then they met, and their kid was me. Totally. Like, <laughs> but I was that man. Yeah, that I was that kid. <laughs> like, but I, which is the best. It's like you listen that. to country songs and you're just totally. like shivers everywhere, my whole body. Mm. Like, even though it's not till the very end when you spin it around, even though the story is about someone else, I think it's the most revealing thing. I think it's a... It's so deeply personal. It really I'm hits you in the gut. Very, I am yeah. very excited Thanks. for this. I am very excited for this. I am very excited for this because this, this is the this is the story of the person who uh, used to live in Taylor's house that she moved into, right? We've we've reacted to the song on Eras tour, and then you guys will fill me in in the comment section about this story. But now I know all of that. Going into this, I'm going into this with like different knowledge. So this is gonna be fun. It's real good. Man. <laughs> <clears throat> this is gonna be fun. If this is the song I'm thinking of, it might not be, but I think Becca it is. Rode up on the afternoon train. It was sunny. It is, it is. Her salt box house on the coast took a mind off St. Louis. Bill was the heir to the standard oil name and money. The town said, how did a middle-class divorce say do it? The wedding was charming, if a little gauche There's only so far, no money goes They picked out a home and called it Holiday House I love this chorus, by the way. The parties were tasteful, if a little loud The dog... This is that, this is that, um... This, the, the, the chorus of this song is is the one I think it is, right? It is, it is, it is. If the chorus of this song is the one I think it is, then it is literally like, it's like a, a mini anthem among Swifties. And I can, I, I know, I can see why, because it's, it's fucking awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. It's, oh man, I'm, I'm, I'm actually excited. I'm literally, I get to press play and listen to it. And I'm excited to do that. Oh, oh man. told him to settle down. Showed up what could have been. There goes the maddest woman this town has ever seen. She had a marvelous time ruining everything. <laughs> Rebecca gave up on the road, I then said. I love that she. Forever. I love that she can, like a song with so many sad tales, the way Taylor performs it and sings it. There's like an element of like pride to it and like happiness to it. Like almost just recalling the memories of someone, whether they're sad or anything, doesn't matter because you're just breathing fire into their life once again. And Taylor's performance really showcases that, just her facial expressions and everything. You can see she is like loving this, like absolutely loving performing this. Flew in all her bitch pack friends from the city. Fill the pool with champagne, swim with the big names, and glue through the money on the boys and the ballet. <laughs> Losing on card game bets with Dolly. And they 
My cheeks are home from smiling so much. Who knows if she never showed up what could have been. There goes a the more shameless woman this town has ever seen. She had a marvelous time ruining everything. Best, best line. Love that they line. Say she was seen on occasion, pacing the rocks there and out at the midnight sea. The chills, the chills. Oh no, 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 no. I got this, I got this. This is a weird kind of like teary eyed thing because I'm just like loving the story. I'm just lost in the story. And Taylor's like happy, smiling performance of the story with a song that has like a lot of happy moments to it. But even the beginning where it's like talking about the heart giving out of, of after the marriage and that sort of stuff, which by the way, I think people got a little bit confused when I was like um, what, uh, watching er the Errors tour and this song was performed and the dancer who was portraying the husband went up the stairs and never came back down and people saying, oh, Luke, you didn't understand that the, the, the husband died. No, I meant where did he go? <laughs> there, was, there was no back to, to the house. There was no stairs or anything, but he vanishes into thin air. That's what I meant. I was more impressed. Like he went up the stairs into an open room and he vanished. Did I, did I just not see anything? It's like they just teleported him that's what I, that's what i meant when i was saying where did he go that was what i meant i was just like where did that guy go he just like vanished from fit air um honestly i love taylor's approach to this song and this story that is what's making this it, it and like even that part that she was talking about where it's like that twist in country music um that, that she says she loves so much when country like country songs do it where it's like it was me i was that person this was my house this was the thing and there she goes and then that house was bought by me you gotta love it Showed up what could have been. And now we move on to her. There goes the loudest woman this town has ever seen. <laughs> Smiles! I had a marvelous time ruining everything. Oh my god, I fucking love her. voice just sounded stunning riding into those higher notes to end off the song changing the tone of the song so it matches the transition to her beautifully well done beautifully well done and there we go the, 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 it's gonna be nice because there's more i can actually like pause and break these up more nicely than i could miss americana because but well, dead songs so it's quite easy to do but that i think is where we will end um episode one um i'm gonna work out like i'm, I'm gonna like let these songs pace themselves i think that's the best way unless you you would all like to vote for like uh a way you want me to do them other than that i was thinking i'll just let it pace themselves i'll try and keep them between like half an hour and like 40 minutes like in that window if we go over we go over whatever um and that way you guys still get like nice big reactions on your Fridays, you know, you still get nice long episodes, it'll always be at least like half an hour. Um, I'm curious, what do people, what do people do when like they watch these videos? What are you doing? You guys eating right now? Are you watching it at work? Like if you're watching it at work, maybe don't say, <laughs> I don't know. Do some of you just listen to these? I wonder like if you listen to these, is it like, like I, I've always wondered like if you just took one of my videos and just like listen to it like a Taylor Swift reaction now, is, does it come like, like a radio? Would it sound like a radio or does it not sound like that? I don't know. How do you guys watch these? How do you guys enjoy them? I'd, I'd actually be really curious. Maybe we should start like a giant thread on this video as well, where everyone is. Where are all, where are all of you beautiful Swifties? Where are, where is everybody? Where is everybody? Where are you watching this from? What part of the world? Where are you watching this from? <sighs> I'm not gonna cry. I'm not gonna cry. I'm not gonna cry. I'm not gonna cry. This is, this one was a different kind of reaction because I didn't, there was no tears, but there was. These eyes were full of tears from the moment I pressed play <laughs> to now. 
<laughs> the whole way through. And I think I haven't stopped smiling. It's like, it's, it's weird. It's so perfectly Taylor, you know? It really just fits her. And you can feel her, like, comfortableness in these songs. Like, just strip down raw Taylor with the guitar, and that is it. And you can just, you just feel it's so perfectly her. I don't know if that makes sense, but it just, it, there's like a, there's a difference to these songs. Even the way she's performing them, you can, you can feel it. And like, with like, di like, again, I, I wish I was better at articulating myself. I try my best. Um, like when Taylor's performing these songs, she looks so comfortable, so happy. Even with the sad parts of the songs, there's this element of overwhelming happiness that you can like, that just like exudes from her and her aura. And you can just see it that she's just loving this, you know? It's like really stripped down live performance that we are getting. There's like a real element of enjoyment and love from this performance. And that really shines through where it doesn't matter if the song is devastating. There's like such a passion in performing it that you can't help but smile at Taylor's happiness to be able to perform these songs. I can imagine a, 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 maybe a big portion of that does come from the fact that this is the first time she's been able to play with other people in like such a long time. So there's probably like a personal sort of love for that, you know, for like, oh, I'm back to like doing what I love. I'm back to making music, but with people here in this studio, you know, and like, like it's, it's her home away from home, you know, like sort of that kind of feeling, which is probably why there's such like a warm feeling just around everything. I don't know if that make, again, makes sense. Um, but yeah, it's really freaking beautiful. The set's beautiful. The album's beautiful. The, the performance is beautiful. Everything around this is like picturesque and like, a, like it's like a painting come to life. Like even now I'm just looking at the screen and seeing track four exile. And I'm seeing this, this stream, this river surrounded by luscious green trees, which make me think it's probably just filmed in spring. You've got all these like beautiful lights and this fire going. It's like cabin that you can barely see because it's been swallowed by the ocean of green. And I'm just like, I'm just like looking at this and I'm just like, this looks stunning. And everything I'm looking at matches the album, matches the songs matches the room inside that cabin and Taylor's performance and her energy. It's all hand in hand, circles around a fire. It's just, it's just beautiful. There's like a real specialness to this, you know? I know I'm gonna have so much fun every Friday checking more and more of these songs out and listening to more about the stories behind them and learning more and this is gonna be fun. This is gonna be really fun. Anyway. I hope you all enjoyed this reaction. Thank you so much for watching the whole way through if you did. I hope you have the best weekend ever. I really do. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, please subscribe. Next week, Friday, we have the release of Taylor's new album. If I've planned these videos correctly, that should be the case. Um, I've asked you all for like ideas on how you want uh, me to record a reaction to that new album. And all of you pretty much said you don't care. <laughs> like, you, that you'd be happy with one giant video. You'd be happy with a live stream. I think a live stream could be a cool idea. The only issue with a live stream, I've, which is why I've never live streamed on YouTube before, is because my audience on YouTube is so varied. So, like, I, like, I've, like it's just so varied. Um, so I don't know how, like, a live stream would work. Because if I did a live stream... Um, for like a Taylor's album release, then my first ever live stream would go out to like 400,000 plus people and a big portion of them might join not knowing what it is, seeing the Taylor release. And I was like, I don't really know how it would work. Um, so yeah, I was like, I kind of a cool idea, but I, I probably would have to do it on Twitch and then there's the all copyright rules and I don't really know how that would work. Um, cause I want to play the songs, but I don't know if I could be able to do that. So yeah, yeah. I think the easiest way would not be to live stream just to play it safe. Um, and instead I'm going to record videos. I think I'll, I'll probably just decide on the day, but I think what I'll end up doing is something similar to what I'm doing now where I will react. So there'll be reactions going out all across the day, but I'll try and like put like four songs in each reaction and I'll do like reactions to four songs at a time. Um, I think I'll probably end up doing that uh, instead of like one giant album reaction. Um, because I want to make sure I take in a lot of the songs. I think one giant album reaction might take away a little bit of that, but if I focus more on like four at a time, it could be a bit better. Originally, I was planning on just doing like reactions to every single song individually, but I didn't want to bombard people's like subscription feed 
with <laughs> like a huge amount of uh, Taylor reactions. Um, Cause like, like I said, people who are subscribed to the channel might be here for the anime or might be here for like the Indonesian artists we react to. And what, and then like on a random Friday for these people who don't follow Taylor, they'll just get like 15 <laughs> songs and they'll be like, what? <laughs> so I felt like a bit unfair to those people who maybe aren't subscribed to the, to the channel specifically for Taylor. Um, like I wouldn't do that for any other artist. Um, yeah, so I was like, right. I think that I think like that's the best way. I don't know if you if you have any other plans, fire them my way. Let me know. Anyway, I hope you all have an amazing day. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe. And as always, my friends, you will see me in the next video.